Hello, this is Bloomin Byron, and I'm here with Homestead Gardens to teach you all about propagation. Now, propagation is the process of making more plants from one plant, um, or several. So today we're mainly going to discuss vegetative propagation, and mainly just cuttings and uh, air layering, and just some different methods of how to root a cutting. Now, propagation is a huge subject. There are multiple different ways of doing everything. This is just how I do things. And if you have further questions, uh, please feel free to, um, to leave a message or anything like that. I absolutely encourage that. I will hopefully try to cover all of your questions, but if anything comes up, I'm more than happy to help. So you're going to hear a couple of different uh, terms today. Callus will be one of the biggest ones uh, for a couple of the cuttings that we're taking. So for the Hoya pubicalix and the Zamioculus zamiofolia, Zamioculcus, Zamioculcus zamiofolia, sorry. Um, we're going to take cuttings or uh, leaf cuttings in some cases from those two plants and we are going to allow them to dry out allow the wound to dry out now i'm going to allow these cuttings to dry out for probably five or six hours you can go a couple of days uh, with some more succulent things like actual succulents, you, you can even wait up to a week. Sometimes if I'm rooting like a, a let's say a jade, I will leave, I will let that cutting callus or leaf cutting callus until I start to see roots forming uh, and then I'll plant it. But today we're, you know, this is just a, a general light dry out before we actually pot them in soil or put them in our prop box or put them in no actually i think yeah we're only doing soil and prop box for the callus cuttings today but i'm really excited to show you guys uh, just some simple methods here you know hopefully we can build on this and add more as we go but um it's a really fun project for you and your family if you have a beloved house plant that you just really would like to either revive or just make multiples of to put everywhere uh, this is you know these are some really good methods for doing that all right well i am super excited hopefully you'll get a lot out of these uh these demos that i'm doing and please again leave any questions or comments that you might have all right thank you thank you for taking a break with me today Hey everyone, now me, contestant number one, my Hoya pubicalix. This is a really beautiful plant. It has these really awesome kind of speckled leaves, the very thick succulent. It's, it's a vining plant, obviously. It, it really is very vigorous. It's grown very well for me. The problem is it's gotten a little too big and I just don't have the space to dedicate to this, to this size of plant in my home. And it's just time to revive it a little bit. It hasn't bloomed consistently for a year. So I think it's just time to give it a little zhuzh. So contestant number one, and here we go. I'm going to show you how to take cuttings of this Hoya pubicalix. Hello. So again, at the beginning of the video, I said that certain plants require different um, techniques for taking cuttings, different methods. So Hoya, like some succulents like jade or Zamiococcus or um, Echeveria, they require a callusing period before you put them in soil. So I've already taken cuttings from my Hoya, but I'm going to take a couple of more so you see what I so you see what I mean when I when I say how to take the cutting. Um, but normally, if you're going to allow a cutting to callus, you can allow them maybe two to three hours. I've left them a day or two, depending, uh, to just allow that to really callus over. And it just helps stimulate growth. So we're gonna take two different types of cutting from this Hoya pubicalix. So I've taken 
mallet cuttings. And you can kind of see why it's called that. It just contains a leaf axle, an, an active node, and just these two little bits of stem. And that's been sitting for a couple of hours. And we've also taken tip cuttings. Um, this tends to be the, the type of cutting that will instantaneously just start growing. A mallet cutting is going to take a while for it to pro start to produce a new stem. But this, once rooted, should start growing immediately. Um, so try to take as many of these as you can, but sometimes the plant just doesn't have enough active growing tips and you have to take mallet cuttings and just wait a little bit for, that, uh, for it to start draping. Okay. So, here we go. I am going to find a piece of this Hoya. Okay, this is a good bit. So we have this nice leaf right here and two sections of stem on either side. There's an active growing node or, yeah, there's, a, there's an auxiliary node in this stem so it'll So we'll get a new branch out of that. And I mean, the Hoya are very easy to, to root. You just want to make sure you give them time to callus over. So this one I'm going to set aside over here and I can probably put it in the pot with the others once it's had a little bit of time to chill. All right, and tip cutting. I really hope I didn't get rid of all of my nice... I mean, we can take this one In my opinion, this kind of wispy growth at the tip, that's probably not going to survive. Uh, I'm going to cut it back a little bit. Not so far that we're getting into the harder wood, but it's still new growth. And I can still, and it's producing a lot of sap from that cut. So I'm thinking that this is, yeah, this is very active growth here. And then just cut a couple of nodes down from the leaf axle. And hopefully you can see this. These already have little root nodes forming on them. So this is, you know, this is already set up to, to root. Just give it a little time to callus, and then I will show you how we put them in the pot. For our next uh, cutting, we have the Zamia Colchis Zamia Folia. This variety is called Raven. It's uh, known obviously because its leaves turn this very, 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 very dark color, very close to black, but not quite black. But um, what's awesome about them is that as they're growing, they come out green or very dark green and then just fade to this black. See how? The leaf changes. It's just a really beautiful plant. It's so easy to take care of too. I mean, they ZZs are great for low light or high light, uh, and they um, are also really fun to propagate. So very much like succulents, these the leaves of the ZZ can be rooted. So I have a couple of cuttings over here that I'm going to show you in a second, but you can cut off a leaf allow that leaf to callus for a couple of hours or a day, and then, and then stick that leaf in the soil and it should root. It's a slow growing plant, but eventually you will get another duplicate of this beautiful uh, Zamia colchis, Zamia folia raven. All right, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second. Okay, so I'm going to show you um, how to root the ZZ. So this is the branch that I've cut off the ZZ plant, um, one of two. The other one I've broken down, I've cut the, I've cut the stem off uh, and I've tried to maintain as much of this petiole on the leaf as I can. Uh, they're very close to the stem, but I mean, I, I feel like they root better out of the petiole. So just try to get a little bit of that in there if you can. Now it's really just this simple, it's, 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 you can do this with 
I'm pretty sure almost all succulents from what I, I mean, I'm not going to go on record saying that, but a lot of succulents you can do by leaf cutting. It takes a long time, but it's, you know, it's a lot of fun and it, it's, it, it's cool to see them when they're just little guys and see what they look like when they're really small versus when they become, you know, the magnificent plant babies that you're going to foster. So here we go. We're just going to slip this leaf in. Probably about an inch, inch and a half in there, and then just like gently pack the soil around that. Now when I've done this before, I've noticed that the new growth tends to come off of the front of the leaf. I don't know if that's maybe just the way I place them in there that it's happening that way, or if that's just how they do it. Um, but again, that's just my experience. So I tend to kind of lean the leaf back a little bit and kind of go around in a little circle. Again, packing that soil around the leaf because when you water, you don't want the leaf to move. There we go. Now again, don't be frustrated, this is gonna take a long time. After I take this and water it, I'm going to place it on a heating mat under some lights that I have in my plant hospital, which I will be showing you in a little bit. But um, I tend to baby them like that until I see some sign of growth. Uh, you know, anything past a month, I, I tend to test the leaves very lightly. If they don't budge, then chances are that it's rooted. Um, if the leaf starts to discolor or look like it's in any way rotting, it's just not, it's, it's a, it's a no-go and I would just throw it away. But, you know, with watering things like this, because, you know, when they do start forming roots, they're going to be so thin and small, I would A, stick to this, like, you know, well-draining soilless media, and B, I'm going to water it once really thoroughly right before it goes into my plant hospital and then I'm going to allow it to dry down almost completely before I water it again. And then, and I'm probably going to repeat that process because not only will that drying down encourage, you know, whatever roots do grow um, on these leaves to reach for the water and root down into the soil. It's also just going to prevent the leaves from or roots from rotting because again, ZZs don't tend to love being super, super wet. All right, so we've got this guy down, ZZ down, and here again are my Hoya pubicalic, pubicalix, excuse me, pubicalix cuttings. So I'm going to do a couple of different methods with these guys. Um, I'm going to do a soil method. I don't normally do the soil method, but it works. Uh, absolutely does work. I think with this method, it might be best to find a couple of small mallet cuttings like this. Let's see. I think I can fit like three in here. There's another one. Yeah, I think I can do this. So I'm just going to sink that into the soil like that. We'll just show you how it lays in the soil. So yeah, it horizontally onto the soil, but I'm going to get that a good inch or two even under the soil because we don't want the leaf just to flop out of the pot. Okay. go. Again, just going working around in a circle. feel like when that starts to grow, it's going to send out some really nice growth and it's going to look really full. So again, I'm going to treat this very similarly to 
the ZZ. I'm going to water it very thoroughly, put it under plant lights and on a heating pad to encourage that root growth. And um, if I don't feel like it's getting enough humidity, you can always put a cloche over it. Uh, or you can literally just get a Ziploc bag and put it over the top of your Hoya, your Hoya, your potted Hoya's cuttings and, and just let it sit in there. Yeah, maybe take the bag off every couple of days and just let it air out, but, uh, and check to make sure you don't see any active mold or anything. But, uh, other than that, I would allow this soil to dry down just like you would with the ZZ. All right, now I'm going to show you another method of propagating cuttings and we'll use the rest of these Hoya cuttings and some other uh, house plants that I need to propagate. All right. Okay, here we have our second method of propagating cuttings. So this method is called the prop box. Now the prop box is an easy way of maintaining your humidity and heat level uh, around your cuttings and it keeps it all nice and enclosed in this box. If you don't have a super humid environment, sometimes cutting, especially tropical plants, they require that humidity just to start pushing out root growth. So, okay, first things first, show you what I got in here. So, this is just a mixed media that I made of long fiber sphagnum moss, some seed starter uh, mix, charcoal, and a few pieces of bark. So I like to keep the mix very loose, but, mo but uh, moisture retentive. The charcoal is in there just to help prevent any kind of anaerobic uh, activity. So this is an excellent media uh, to hold that moisture and keep it directly on the plant and it's just nice and airy. So, we're going to take our mallet cuttings, and again, so it's going to be just like it was in the pot, they're going to be laid horizontally. I, I can't show you any closer because I'd have to zoom, but there are adventitious roots on these cuttings. We're going to lay them on the surface. I know people who have prop boxes going that are, I mean, like, have eight, eight going at once, have, like, whole gorilla racks of these, and it's just, like, <laughs> I just, I don't know, I mean, I, I'd like to do something else every now and then besides propagate, it just, just seems like so much work. <laughs> it's like, I love plants, but I don't know if I, I don't know if I need a hundred cuttings of Hoya right now, but, hey, you know, teach their own. Okay, and again, as you're doing this, because it is an enclosed environment, it's going to be heat, hot and humid in there. Make sure that your cuttings don't have any bugs on them. Like well, check under the leaves and the leaf axles, on the stem, everywhere. Make sure you don't see any mealybug or aphids or anything. Sometimes, even before doing this, I would rinse off cuttings in almost really hot water. Like, you know, warm hot water. Uh, not scalding, and just make sure I rinse everything off of them. Okay, so another great thing about this is that you can do so many different cuttings in one box. So, I mean, in this one, I'm going to do three, three different plants. And don't worry, I'm going to show you an overview of this after this video. Okay. So my second plant that's going in here is the syndapsis, or silver pothos. And again, this is a mallet cutting. I have an aerial root. I have a node in that leaf axle. And I'm doing the same thing I did with the Hoya. I am laying it on the media, tucking the moss around the stem, and keeping it all in this one section. These are really beautiful plants. Um, they hang, they tend to, you know, 
just maintain this really beautiful color. They're just, it's really nice. It has a very metallic look to the leaf. Okay. Now, I know you all are going to become crazy plant people like me, and I want to show you another use for the prop box besides just propagating the plants you already have. Um, sometimes you're going to want specialty plants, things that are a little bit more expensive if they're rooted or finished. So you're going to scour the internet and you're going to find cuttings of that plant for sale. I find a lot on Etsy. Um, now, I sometimes order them as just two node cuttings, and that drops down the price dramatically. And so a lot of times I will get, this is a Monstera cutting, I'm going to show you how to root Monstera in a moment, but I wanted to give you a visual of what you might find when you start getting your plant deliveries. So. They will come like this. It's just a piece of the stem. You'll sometimes have roots that are this long. Sometimes they will just be barely showing on the stem. Sorry, I got cut off there. So just to end that segment, I'm going to show you the Monstera cutting up close. And this is how you would lay it in there. So make sure that the active nodes are facing upwards and that's going to be in the crotches of these leaf axles. So make sure that this is really flush with the media and you can see how I've laid out all of the Hoyas. I've covered the stems with the moss, the syndapsis right there and again you can see that really awesome uh, metallic splash across the leaf. All right, now I'm gonna show you how these get placed and the further care that I give them until they're rooted. All right, everybody. So here is my little plant hospital. It is a little less full than normal. Um, I just, I, I potted up a few things yesterday and gave them as gifts, actually some Monstera cuttings that I had taken a few weeks ago. And I'll go ahead and show you the few that I have left and how I rooted them in a subsequent video. But here we go. So this is how I keep my prop box. So it is, I can't see this, it's actually on a heating pad. And this heating pad I purchased at Homestead Gardens. Um, that helps with root development. It keeps the, it keeps it, it also helps with creating humidity inside the box. I keep them under these, these, um, these lamps. And, you know, honestly, I've seen root cuttings like this root in, uh, without subsequent lighting or very good lighting but I feel like this helps speed things along so and I'm all about trying to help these little cuttings have a good start. So this is how I would keep it and again monitor it you know if you had to have to add subsequent water you don't ever want the water to be above the soil line. You don't really want standing water in there. You just want to keep that media nice and moist, but not sitting in water. So here we go. We've got our prop box going. And now I'm going to show you how, oh, look at my little Nepenthes. He's so cute. He's getting bigger. Um, I'm going to show you how I take Monstera cuttings and how I root them in water. Well, hello. I'm going to show you how to root Monstera cuttings in water. So this is a really easy way of rooting cuttings, but it's also, it can be attractive. You can make almost like a floral arrangement out of them. So it has a lot of different benefits. So here we have the young tip growth of a philodendron from one that I am trying to rejuvenate. Um, so from this cutting, 
I see this. It's got a nice aerial root there. It's got it's got tip growth and it's got an auxiliary node. I think that that's a cutting right there. So I am going to take some sharp shears and cut right behind that second node. Now sometimes one one of you know one of these leaves or two of them will senesce, they won't last, and you don't just keep your patience, if the cutting still looks healthy, it could still push out a new leaf. In fact, this one is currently pushing out a new leaf. Um, so there we go with cutting number one. Okay. So I'm going to snip off that extra bit right there and I see another full cutting right here. We have the leaf axle, a node, and an aerial root. Cutting number two. And I think, oh, you know what? I see some, the beginnings of some other adventitious roots on this stem, so I'm going to cut it a little longer, and I did, a little longer than I would have. And then, let's see, let's look. Nope. Cutting number three. So I hope you're seeing what I'm doing here. I'm just going through and cutting off the leaf axles. It's like a mallet cutting, but you know, aim to find spots that actually have existing roots if you're going to root in water. I'm going to do all of this for you so we can make that look nice and full and it'll be attractive. Now this has very, 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 very vigorous growth at the front, at the tip. We've got a nice brand new leaf, we've got two aerial roots. I think I'm going to cut that, yeah, I'm going to cut that right. Now, as you fill this out, it starts to look, you know, attractive, like an arrangement. I mean, you, I, I could put this in my kitchen. I'm going to put it in my plant hospital because I like having them under lights because it encourages them to throw roots faster. So again, and by the way, I'm, <laughs> I'm cleaning all this up. I'm just, <laughs> I think it's probably easier for me right now not to worry about all the stuff I'm cutting onto the floor. Um, okay, and now I see this has two roots on it, and then it also has an, another uh, root that's starting to press through the stem. I'm going to cut right there. So we've got those two roots, a nice fenestrated leaf. And again, when you're taking cuttings from Monstera, the, if you take cuttings from a stem that has highly fenestrated leaves, or these splits, what makes a Swiss cheese plant a Swiss cheese plant is the fenestrated leaf. And so the, if you take cuttings from a stem that has those fenestrations, you're going to also have a nice fenestrated plant. I'm loving that. That's so cute. All right. Last cutting. Two adventitious roots, a nice leaf, and a node. <laughs> and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> um, all right. So there. And I mean, I think that's attractive. Try not to break the roots when you put them in. But I think that's that's enough. That's enough um, Monstera cuttings for me for today. So I'm going to go ahead and show you where I place them in the plant hospital. Quick addendum to my water uh, propagating of the Monstera is that you got to change the water every three days, I would. I, I actually tend to change it every two to three days. Um, 
it just helps keep the water fresh. You don't want it to stagnate. So I, if I, I didn't say that in the video, so I'm just a little side note. All right, thanks. All right, everyone. So now we've got the monstera cuttings in the plant hospital under lights. It's on a heating pad, which will help it start throwing some new roots. It's under lights, which will help encourage it to grow. Now, while we're here, I'll go ahead and show you just a few of the things that I have. Now, I think I've mentioned this before, but I grow a lot of clivia. They're beautiful flowering plants in the amaryllis family. Here is a seedling that I've had going for three years, maybe. And this is one that's about the same age. Now, when I first started those, I was kind of new to growing them and to growing under lights. Um, and I feel like this past year, I've really started being a little bit more intentional with my, my use of lights. And now look at the difference. So this is a seedling, or these are three seeds from one plant and they're all slightly different, which is kind of cool. Now they have been growing under lights for uh, over a year. These are only a year old. And I mean, just look at the uh, at how close they are. They're very, they're kind of catching up with the three-year-olds. And you know what I did? I just kept them under lights all winter long. Uh, there was no rest period. Usually I give them a rest period, but this year I did not. I just kept them under lights and kept them going. And they threw so much foliage. They put on a lot of root growth and I'm just very, I'm very happy with them. These are also some other seedlings that I've started recently. And again, it's just, when I say recent, it's probably like four or five months, but these, these just threw a lot of foliage very quickly. They're working on, some of them are working on their second leaf. And that's, uh, that's pretty impressive for that short amount of time for a clivia. They're very slow growing plants. All right, um, let me see. I think I'd like to show you one of my monstera cuttings that's starting to throw some new roots. So you can see this is this is a tip growth and a mid stem cutting. Now you can see that white that white root that is a new that is a new root that's grow up and started growing since it's been in water. And you can also tell on this tip growth that those, that the aerial roots that it had have extended and are actively growing as well. Now, sometimes people tend to put them in soil a little too quickly. Um, at this point, I would still leave these in water for a while until those roots kind of ramify and become a little bit more, uh, a little bit more complex. I like them to have, you know, start branching out and get a little bit longer before I put them in soil. But the overall, you know, benefit of, of rooting in water is that you can see the growth, it's a lot of fun, and you just get to, you know, you get to monitor the plant until you're ready to put it in soil. And when you put it in soil, you want to stick to very, very well aerated uh, soil substrates, almost like a, maybe like a, an orchid mix, mixed with a little bit of potting soil would be a really, really good mix for a monstera that's been rooted in water. Uh, because you get that oxygen level, it's got some moisture retention, but it's not crazy. And I, I just had better luck using that than conventional potting soil. Okay, well, I believe uh, the next video is going to be air layering. Yep, yeah, air layering. So I'm going to go and get set up for that, and we will be right back. Thanks. A quick introduction to the tools for air layering. We have cellophane, uh, we have some painter's tape, painter's tape or any kind of twine, a nice clean pair of sharp shears, and pre-moistened long fiber sphagnum moss, which again can be purchased at home, uh, Homestead Gardens. All right, so Let's get to it. I just wanted to give you a nice overview. This is just simple, yeah, cellophane plastic. All right, 
Hello. All right. So we finally got to my favorite part, uh, the air layering. So air layering is a really awesome way of cloning large plants like this without um, without cutting the without cutting it from the plant. So with air layering, essentially what you do is you just make an incision, a small, uh, not even a half inch, uh, less than that, just a little knock into, into the stem. You cut off any surrounding leaves around that, and then you pack in sphagnum moss around that. Then from there you take cellophane, you wrap that, and I'm going to use painter's tape, but you can use twine or whatever's on hand uh, to tie off the ends. Now you can use air layering with a number of plants. Ficus in general are really uh, well suited to air layering, but also some outdoor plants are as well. Rhododendron especially is very, very, very good at uh, air layering. So if you wanted to get a nice piece of a rhododendron, you, you know, it might take a year, but you could use this method as well. And there are products out there that you don't have to use cellophane. It's literally like a hard molded plastic thing that you fit over the stem. I, I just, I, I don't find that personally necessary for me. So, but they do make products like that. All right. So I'm going to pick the portion that I want to propagate. And I think I really, I think I'm going to want this whole section, this nice strong um, tip growth. So I'm going to take out all these leaves and side shoots in this general vicinity. Nice, clean shears. Clean shears, it's not hard. Bleach, though bleach my paw is rusting, but even just rinsing your shears off before you use them or wiping them down with oil, whatever. Be kind to your tools and you will never have to replace them. Okay. So I want to propagate this because, and with all ficus, they produce latex. So if you have a uh, sensitivity to latex or uh, you know any kind of allergies make sure that you wear gloves or just be aware when you're propagating ficus that it does produce that so my end goal with this plant and I, I don't know if you can see it but there's actually two cuttings here wound around each other is I want this to look um, kind of like a, a ficus bengaliensis does in the wild, where it's just, you know, all this mass of fused stems. Um, it's really difficult to achieve that in a home environment, and as you can tell, this is, you know, just growing and growing and growing, and it, it will do that, but I've got to top it off somewhere and, and then encourage that bushy tree growth. So, I think... I'm also going to take off this auxiliary growth right there, as I do not think it is necessary. And I really just want the strong tip growth. Okay. But my end goal with this cutting is, is that once it's rooted, I'm going to cut it off of this main plant and repot it at the base and then tie it to the existing tree and try to fuse that cutting into this plant and essentially create a buttressed, um, very natural looking uh, uh, root flare and tree form. So I'm gonna hopefully do this a few more times until I get a really nice trunk um, and that kind of buttressed fused ficus look, and I think if I can achieve that, I will be very happy. Um, I mean, I've done it in bonsai before, but I, I think I, I, I'm pretty, I am pretty sure 
then it'll behave the same way. So right underneath a node, in this right in this node right here, I am going to make a small cut. And then I'm going to make another small cut slightly above it and kind of cut that piece of flesh out. Again, it's just a tiny little knock in, in the stem. You are not cutting halfway through this stem. No, 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 no. Just a little knock in there. And then take some of your sphagnum, your long fiber sphagnum, and you just pack it around that wound. And I think that will stay for a moment. I am going to get my cellophane, it's already falling out, but I'm going to get my cellophane prepared. This is probably what I should have done first. Cellophane is prepared. I've got my sphagnum in the wound. What I'm going to do, I'm going to fill, I'm going to put a mound of sphagnum in cellophane. And then I'm going to wrap, pull the edges of that cellophane straight, and start to wrap it over itself, holding that moss in place. Now, it is the beginning of the season. This plant is thriving, throwing out new growth. I have every belief that this should only take a month or two for this to start showing some roots. Um, but you will be able to tell when your plant has started to root into the sphagnum because you will start to see roots forming up against the plastic. Now, tape on the plastic, not on the tree, and just tighten up. Oop, you know what? We left a leaf. There we go. Okay, now we're cooking. All right, and again, tape off onto the plastic only and just keep it nice and secure on the top and bottom. And making sure that plastic is sealed around the moss will keep it nice and moist, but monitor it. You can even lift open the top a little bit and pour some water in there if you're worried about it drying out. But in my experience, it doesn't really dry out all that often. So here we are. This is our cutting. Eventually, once we see the roots really growing and crowding in the sphagnum, I will cut the stem off right above a node and plant it at the base of the tree. Now I'm going to show you a close-up of it and then I think we might start wrapping up. All right? Again, here is just a close-up of what I've done. And you can see that second cutting. See what I was talking about, how they're wound together? Eventually these stems will fuse together. Um, and I've cut, and I'm going to cut this cutting off right beneath this other stem and then tip this. And then the plant will start throwing more branches and getting a lot fuller. But there you go. That is how you air layer. Now, from here, we just play the waiting game.